in this video we're going to focus on how we can show the data labels here on a specific data set or in this case on the bars while making sure that they're not being displayed here on the line so let's start to explore how we can do this so let's start to explore how we can do this so the first thing what we want to do here is we want to go here to chargeS3.com getting started to get our default code so scroll down here and copy this, this chunk of code. All right. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. I'm going to paste this in here. Once I paste that in there, I will just cut out here the information or the title, put in there, save this, refresh, and there we are. So now we have our bar chart. What I want to do is I want to have a combo bar chart, a combo bar line chart first. So let's scroll down here and let's duplicate this data set here. I want to duplicate this data set, put a comma here, and we can just say weekly um, sales or cost. I'll just give it a cost and I'll just change here the color of a single color line. Border width here, let's say tension, put it on 0 0.4 so the line will have an elastic shape. All right, we're still missing a few items, so let's do that first. Uh, let's see we have this here background color border color what I want to do here is of course comma we will say type equals line save this again there we are so now we have this what I want to do is just to change some of these numbers let's say 24 24 this is 12 this is uh, 12 again and I guess this 15 9 and 12 save that refresh all right so now we have some differences here that looks beautiful next thing what we need to do here is start to add up our plugin so to add our plugin we need to have of course the javascript file here i'm using cdnjs.com to get the chart.js plugin data labels and the latest version as of now is version 2.0.0 so i'm going to click on this one here so we get the javascript code put it here up and then make sure we put just here down. What is very important is that the JavaScript library of charges needs to be loaded first before we load the data labels plugin. Why? This have certain variables that is dependent on whatever is in here. So this needs to load first before this one will be working. So now we have this here. Next thing what I want to do here is to scroll down here and then activate the plugin. Put a comma here, say plugins. And then here bracket and then we indicate here the chart data labels as you spell it exactly same c with capital d capital and l capital save this refresh there we are so now what happens automatically the data labels is being triggered on both sides so what i want to do now is to filter out the line item here because we don't want the line item or the line data set have any uh, item being shown in here or the data labels so we're going to remove that one to do this we're going to customize something so in here we put an enter and then we're going to say here plugins and in the plugins we're going to get here the data labels and now we can start to do here I'll put a comma here so because of our data labels plugin basically what it did it activated a specific object here and this object now is being recognized and now we can start to work with here with values so what i'm going to use here is the formatter the formatter is a very powerful tool in data labels where we can control the text what we want to show but also what we can do here is to filter out on which data set we want to show or hide so that's what we're going to do here first of all we're going to do formatter and we're going to make a callback functionality and the callback basically means uh, it is basically a function so it doesn't give you the answer yet but what happens here it says oh hold on we're going to now do something or calculate based on certain conditions and from there on we're going to give you the answer so that's a callback function so in here all i want to do here is to grab the value and the context because it's a callback function we need to use a arrow function expression or arrow expression function that's the right term and then what I want to do here is just to put in here these curly braces. And within here, first of all, I want to say console long and just show you 
what is basically the parameter of value and what is the context here. So if I save this, refresh, open up the developer tab, you can see here we get all of these values and these values are basically all the data sets here or at least the data label values. And when you hover over a certain point, you see we are able to get or extract the value. Of course, this is all fine, but I don't care about that. I care about the context. And if I do context and refresh here, now we see for every data set, we get a lot of data points or information. And what is very important in this case is basically here the data set index. Data set index refers to the index number or the, from the data set, which is in this case, this is data set index zero. Why? It's the first data set here, which is this one here related to the bars. This type here of line is the second data set. So that was that is what we call data set number one. So we can see your data set index this, or let me refresh one more time. You can see here now it loops through. First it loops through all the data set index zero, and then afterward it will have a loop here with data set index one. So that would mean if I just click on this and just get here the data set index, and then what we can do here is the following. We go to put that in here. If I save this now, we should see here now basically two data set index, zero and one, which is correct. So now we can just filter out, and for example, we can make a condition or an if statement saying if data set index zero, in that case, show the data. If it's not, then hide the data. So that's what we're going to do here now. So all what we're going to do here is in the formatter, we're going to create an if statement. And this if statement will say, if the context here equals strict zero if that is the case in that case i want to return what i'm going to return the value here remember these are the values of the data labels and then if that is not the case else i want to return blank and the reason why i'm doing this is because if you don't do this it will give a default value and the default value is just this value here so that's why we need to put in here blank says, I don't want to show anything. That will force that the default value will not be triggered. So if I refresh here now, there we are. So now we have this and you might say, well, can we make it shorter? I'm going to show you a one liner because now I've been very elaborate in explaining it. So what I want to do here is the following. We're going to make a single line here because we can just fine tune this very easy. It's doing exactly the same formatter. Again, the callback here, value, comma context and then here what i'm going to do is the following the arrow function expression and then all i will do here is i will say context dot data set index equals strict zero so basically what i'm doing now is just making one line a if statement so if this is the case in that case so if it is zero i want to say return value if it's not zero in that case return blank basically exactly the same one we're doing here except now a single line here save this refresh and there we are and now we have a nice concise way of making the code and that's basically how you can play around with showing one data set or the other so if you like this video and maybe you want to for example show only a single item here i have a specific video for that how to show the data label only in one bar in chart.js that will just trigger how to show the single item in if you have multiple data sets but you also have multiple bars but you only want to highlight a spe specific one.